Shalom to all of you out there in this uh, great big world of social media. This is Brother Dana coming to you from Chicago. Uh, yes, you're correct. I'm in the car right now. I was making a run to the store uh, to grab um, a few things and to get out of the house, honestly, uh, after being in there for a couple of days. And on my way, something, you know, just really, again, uh, punched my heart. And, and I'm getting the confidence and the boldness to begin to share these um, moments with all of you out there in social media world because I understand that from sharing these things, I'm going to get backlash. Uh, and that backlash that is coming is going to come um, from from the religious societies. And I'm not going to um, even dwell on who, what, when, not where. I'm, I'm not. But I'm, I'm wanting to share these moments that, that have caused me to be who I am today. In where I question so much. Um, uh, as I did in evangelical realm, holding up the Ten Commandments, because they do. They hold the Ten Commandments up even outside of the love of Jesus Christ. They do. They hold the commandments. And I used to ask all the time, if we say we're the church of Jesus Christ, then why is there the Ten Commandments behind the judge? Why is it, you know, in God we trust? Why is it um, um, in our schools that we used to, you know, saying the Ten Commandments? Because we say we're of Jesus Christ, the New Testament. But yet we honor the Ten Commandments. We honor the Ten Commandments on the foundation of America, but yet we say America is Christian. So where and why did we not have the, the, the Beatitudes behind the seat of the judge? The Beatitudes in our schools. The Beatitudes as a foundation of this country. And I have struggled with that in Christianity. Yes, you say that a lot just believe in this grace and they run with it. You know, I'm, again, I'm telling you what I have experienced from those that hold up the Ten Commandments. And now I'm about to say stuff that is going to get another side of family angry with me. Because see, most of my white evangelicals that are close to me have walked away because all these years they felt as if I made excuses for you, my black family, in sharing why you're all locked up. Why y'all in trouble. Why y'all, you know, have no respect. Why y'all, you know, tear up your neighborhoods? Because see, according to the commandments, if you steal, you get locked up. If, if you um, murder, you get locked up. If you um, rape, you get locked up. That's what the commandment said. And, and we use those commandments whenever it is to, to um, hold down people that, that the person or uh, forcing out those commandments or that ruling is greater than. But when those commandments reach the person that usually sits in authority, then it becomes the grace. I'm covered by grace. But the young lady that got pregnant was condemned in front of the church because she broke the commandment. The boyfriend, 
The man that got her pregnant usually was nowhere to ever be found, nor was he ever identified. And so I grew up under commandments. And those same people that I would come back and say, but wait a minute. When you sit and you talk about all our blacks in jail because they're bad people. Let me tell you the facts, the true story. Let me tell you what's really going on. That will break that false idea that you have or, or truth that you have in your head that blacks are all just lawbreakers. No, we have done this. We have set up society for them to fail. And then those that don't fail, even when we've done everything in our power to fail them, we then put on them garbage, lies, false arrests, and we imprison them and now we kill them. We defame them. Because see, when I go to them and I share what the life of Jesus Christ would be doing, a righteous man that saw beyond the behavior, that saw beyond the manifested sin or struggle or issue, Loved them. Touched them. Turned around and acknowledged them. Ate with them. And made his disciples out of them. Because he knew the whole story. And he knew that in life. It jacked up more in some people than in other people's lives. So, my people are telling me, my white family, that me going into these inner city schools with restorative justice to understand the plights and the hardships that our children in the inner city go through. That I'm making excuses for them because I'm, I'm looking at the young lady who is 12 years old, 11 years old, and is sending out naked pictures and doing all kinds of incredible, immoral things is because for eight years of her life, she was sexually molested. But now you want me to tell this victim that because she don't follow the commandment, God is going to take her as a victim and send her to hell. Where me, that has never been molested or has a mother and a father in my home that protected me from so many issues in life. I have a head start on many people. But because I can choose to do the right thing and you can't because you don't have everything that I've had in my life. Now that I have the right to judge you on this same standard of the commandments. Then actually my whole ministry and speaking and my whole life in speaking out for my black family and the injustices that they have been dealt is basically in the eyes of the religious should not be done because the law says whether it's the religious who live by the commandments but yet call themselves evangelical Christians. Seems to be the same type of spirit that I see and I witness. amongst the religious of my Hebrew brothers and sisters. Those who lift up the Torah greater than Yeshua HaMashiach. And the thing that hurts me is that I see the same characteristics
that put this law and and one's ability to choose the right thing as you or I was able to do that. See, I'm at a belief that even the right things that I do is because the Most High Yah through Yahshua HaMashiach gave me the strength to do it. I believe that every time somebody does me wrong, the people that robbed me, my ability to finally or to forgive them, how dare do I take the credit for all of that and say the, the, the Taurus is forgive and not to think that it wasn't the power of Yahshua HaMashiach in me giving me the ability to push forth and do the right thing. And this is where one love and the remnant of individuals that will hear what I'm saying will join because I can't go back to a place where my motivation to seek the, 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 the Lord or now the Most High Yah is because of a law. I was thinking, you know, and this came about because on my way to the store, I saw a gentleman on the side Probably not quite homeless, but very, very close to it. But you could tell that his mind, because of all the th crazy things he was doing, was gone. And I looked at the car next to me. And these were black brothers and sisters. And I looked at them in the car and I saw and, and felt their spirit look at him. Like with just distaste and, you know, and, and judgment. But when I looked at him, at first I, 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 it made me almost weep because I thought about, at one point, that was a beautiful baby that was born with so much potential. And I can't imagine what maybe this precious baby went through that today he's basically homeless out of his mind on some type of substances and then I thought I wonder how a mom would feel to something she gave birth to that she held in her hands that was precious to her that now at the age he was probably 40 but he looked like he was 60 is in this type of condition. But then I thought, well, maybe this man now was never born in a family with a mother that ever held her in his hand, her arms and said, look at my precious son, I'm gonna raise him up to be a king. But maybe he was one of those unwanted kids. Maybe he was one of those kids that was sexually abused and then in school because he was unwanted, he acted up and the teachers, you know, would, would, would punish him and punish him and punish him because the, the rule says this, the law says this, and you're breaking it and punish and punish and punish and, and he dropped out and today he's what he is. But I wonder what would happen along the way that somebody stood outside of the law and took some compassion through the eyes of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And didn't say, oh, yep, this is just excuses. 
but looked at the circumstances that might be around this individual and say, my ah, help my me, help them. Because see, that's what I do every day. I've been in my little area now, I've been in the, in the North Lawndale community for 18, 17, 18, 19 years. It's an all black community. It's one of the traditionally worst communities, impoverished communities in the city of Chicago. I'm only saying that for people to know where I have been living my life. But everywhere I go, those hanging out on the streets and those even doing drug transactions and stuff, I look at them and I talk to them and I um, uh, uh, speak to them as if they're kings and princes and princesses. And so just on this Sunday, I was walking to my car outside to get something and this lady ran up and she said, I know we're on this quarantine, but can I give you a hug? Because she says, I just want to thank you for inspiring us. And I gave her a hug and I said, yeah, but I said, inspiring you. She said, you put that shirt up on your house <clears throat> on Passover. And I saw that and I was like, this man believes that we are Hebrews. And she said, now look down the street. A whole bunch of us are putting it up. Compassion through Yahshua HaMashiach doesn't judge by what they see or, that, or look at the value based on what they see. But they try to sense and feel through their heart. And I'm not getting on feely, leaving scripture behind. But through the life of Yahshua HaMashiach and his reactions to the people around them. I say all of that because, again, this is the direction that one love and those that are coming together is that we want to be people that demonstrate the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. doesn't mean that we are throwing out the Torah or the Ten Commandments. And even as one of my Hebrew teachers who taught Hebrew teachers agreed and told me it was a good example when I first gave it to him, was the law or the Torah would be much like a refinance of a home that when you refinance, I gave this example, that when you refinance, you don't throw out your old contract, but you're given a new one that is still attached to the old one. And he said, that's exactly right. And I said, but then what terms do you follow? My original contract was 12.2% interest fixed. My new contract was 2.8% interest. So you're telling me that even with this new contract, I still must follow the terms of the old? And the subject changed. And so if one love errs, it will err by the Most High Yah looking at me and us and saying you loved too much. And when we say love, love isn't where we close our eyes to what we see around us. But love is to see with our heart and how we can utilize our lives to walk and support that person to wholeness. 
with an attitude that if it wasn't for the Most High Zia's love for me, Dana, why wasn't I that man that I drove past earlier this afternoon? Is it because Dana was so good he made all the right choices growing up? Or were some of my choices that I made were made because I was absent of getting hurt on various levels, physically, socially, and emotionally, from the society, the community, the people I lived around. Because then if I believe that, then we must take out the unfairness between white privilege and not white privilege. Because according to the commandments in the Torah, I've not seen the Most High Yah ever give an excuse that one group of people don't have to follow it if they're set up in a way that's unfair to them due to Egyptian privilege or white privilege or Mexican privilege. But the law is the law. And you either follow it or you do not. There's no clauses for those who have been sexually molested. For those that had a surgery that messed up their lives and now they're 500 pounds and can't move around very much. Do those trump the Ten Commandments? Do they trump the Torah? Do they trump So, one love, I know, is going to start taking some beatings. But one of the things that I am here to do is not to retaliate. Yeshua HaMashiach was too busy about doing his business. And one love and those that will join in, in, in being leaders or be encouraged and walk with us and with us and and add knowledge and wisdom to all of us as as an end of, as as a group of people a nation a group of people just wanting to to live our lives more and more for the most high yah to let him know that i'm married to him and i was thinking about that Would I have to wear a wedding ring all the time to make me love my wife? And without that wedding ring, my love for her would be less or put in limbo? My desire is whether I wear a wedding ring or not, my devotion and my love for my wife will never fade. And whether I'm wearing my wedding ring or not, people around me would know that at least I am not single because the way I would talk or the conversations I would have or the things that I would talk about or not talk about, it would let them know that I don't go there because perhaps I am not that way or I am married or I will let them know, hey, I'm sorry, can't go, I have to leave, I have a wife and I'm devoted to her and my family. And it doesn't take me flashing a ring in front of people. But my life and what I do and what I say. See, both these things in their own way can be beautiful. And I'm not judging the things I'm making only a comparison. 
My white evangelicals proudly wore something all the time to let the world know that they were Christians. And that was a cross. And yet with that cross, we have lynched you, my black brothers and sisters. We have slaughtered you. We have demeaned women, both black, white, and any color in between. Because behind that cross was a religion of supremacy and privilege without the spirit and the love of the true living God. And the most hits that I have taken from my Hebrew brothers and sisters have been my brothers and sisters that wear the fringes. They have beat me up the most because I was saying Yahshua HaMashiach. And I was trying my hardest to say Yahshua HaMashiach. And I hope I get it right. Getting emails from a, a Hebrew brother that says, I follow all the Torah. And then said, if you really think you care about us, here's my cash app. And I didn't see that. And two days later, when I finally saw that, he said, damn you, you are fake. And in that conversation, he said some horrible things to me and about me. But I'm not the people that wear that cross. And I felt this man's pain and his hurt. And before our message back and forth was over with, he apologized and said he was wrong and that he had some anger and some issues that he needed to deal with. And he took it out on me. I didn't throw him away after he made those comments. But just like the man that I saw on the side of the street, I saw in this man hurt. And I said, Most High Yah, please give me the love for him as it's the same love that Yahshua HaMashiach has given to me and has walked with me and has transformed me and has drawn me out of the religious white evangelical family that I grew up under to be who I am today. And now I will say that I boldly will continue in the same fashion, even now in this revelation. But I do what I believe the Most High Yah is saying to my heart. And I need to now do it in confidence. Not arrogance, but confidence. That my sheep know my voice and they'll follow no other. That he who began this good work in me is faithful to complete it. That I continue to work out my salvation in him. I continue to enter into his presence, sometimes with fear and trembling. That I will continue to anoint Yahshua HaMashiach's feet with the praises and the gratefulness in my life for everything he has done for me already. And he's traded my ashes for beauty. He's given me health. And he's given me a boldness and a confidence to speak the truth to who the true chosen people, the Most High Yah, really are. So thank you for hearing my heart. And I look forward to everything that the Most High Yah desires to do in the lives of all of us 
who hunger and thirst for righteousness and thirst after him. Because he said, if you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. And I hope the Most High Yah would agree and say that I desire to seek him. And I have been seeking him with as much of my heart as I possibly can. This is your brother Dana from the city of Chicago saying shalom.